And uh, we visited them when he and our daughter, Lisa, were in Germany. We spent a few days there on a couple of occasions, actually. And uh, Ben would get up at early, 5 o'clock, 4.30, and then he'd come back and shower and we'd have breakfast. Ben, what in the world are you doing? Well, I went running. I had to go running today. Well, how far did you run? Oh, not far today, maybe five miles. And I think to myself, Ben, I could have done that in a car much more easily. <laughs> could have accomplished the same result in terms of getting there and back. In Iraq, he wore such heavy gear that he was totally sweating, and he said that it was true, 114 degrees in the shade. But he had to wear all this stuff. Why? Because of Al-Qaeda. And we think that we're going to win this war for the battle for the next generation, and we think we are going to win it. We have an enemy that is much more serious, much more cunning, much more devious than Al-Qaeda, and we think we are going to win it by sitting on a couch, watching TV and munching chocolates, and hoping everything turns out well. I will preach it there. Thank you for that encouragement. <laughs> What we need is parents who are willing to make some sacrifices. Sacrifices in terms of prayer, sacrifices in terms of protecting our young people, sacrifices in terms of getting their involvement in school, in, in all levels of, of building those relationships. We need people who are going to cry up to God on behalf of our young people. In preparing this message, I was personally convicted about the fact that I do pray for our young people, but I don't pray often enough and fervently enough when I think of the temptations they face. So we need total dedication. We aren't going to win the war by just watching things go by and hoping that in the end everything is going to turn out really nice. Five, you please the commander. You please the commander. Getting back to Ben, one morning there in Germany, he uh, always slept close to his cell phone because, uh, you know, he could be called at any time. And he got called at something like 3.30, had to get dressed 3.30 in the morning. And then later on I said, Ben, what happened? He said, nothing happened. He said, it actually, he says, the reason that we were to be there didn't work out, so we stood around for an hour and a half and then we were sent back home. I thought, Ben... Why didn't you take that cell phone and turn it off? By the way, did you know that you can turn cell phones off? <laughs> I'm convinced there are some people who don't know that. I've been in a meeting, you know, where somebody's cell phone goes off and they find it and they punch a little button and I think, well, praise God, that's taken care of. Two minutes later, it's going off again and they punch another little button. I don't know about your cell phone, but mine has one. It's a little red button. If you hold it long enough, you can actually turn the thing off. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you talk to Ben... He wasn't angry. I'd have been angry, but he wasn't. He said that uh, these things happen in the military, and what you want to do is you need to just please the person who's above you. How do you think the Apostle Paul wanted Timothy to follow through with this? Notice what it says. Young people, your Bibles are open. Thank you. In verse 8 of chapter 1, it says of 2 Timothy, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. You want to please your commander, and you're not getting entangled with the things of this world, like Paul says you should not. And what is that? It is to not be ashamed of the testimony of the gospel. Young people, do not be ashamed of the fact that you are a virgin. Do not be ashamed of, your, of the fact that you attend church and that you have a Bible and you read it. Do not be ashamed to share the life-giving message of Jesus with your friends. Do not be ashamed. Please, Jesus, rather than your friends. Could you imagine what would happen in America if all Christians began to please Jesus rather than others? 
I have no doubt that we would have a spiritual awakening. This is Pastor Lutzer. The reason that the Bible speaks about the need to not be ashamed of Jesus and not be ashamed of the gospel is because the message of the gospel is very, very foolish from the standpoint of the world. The message of the gospel condemns our sin. The message of the gospel tells us that we can't save ourselves, that we are sinners, and that we have a great need. And our generation does not want to hear that. And then the other reason is this. If you aren't living for God, if you're working in an office and your speech and your ethics is the very same as the person who is across the way, you lose credibility. So my friend, let us make sure that we are willing to stand for Christ no matter what. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Dr. Erwin Lutzer has brought part two of The Battle for America's Youth, a call to parents to take back what the enemy has seized. Tomorrow, join us for more practical ways to fight back against a corrupt culture. Running to Win comes to you from the Moody Church in Chicago. Today's message can be yours on CD as our thank you when you give a gift of any amount to support Running to Win. For details, call 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. On the Internet, go to OfferRTW.com. That's OfferRTW, all one word, dot com. Or you can write to us at Running to Win, Box 11174, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. This is Dave McAllister. Join us tomorrow for our next edition of Running to Win.